My name is Jessica and I am the Executive Director and Lead Wildlife Rehabilitator at Carolina Reptile Center. As a wildlife rehabilitation center, our hotline is full of calls from a variety of different scenarios. However, the call we received yesterday was unlike anything we had ever received before. Before I play the voicemail for you, I want you to know that if you're an animal lover, specifically someone who loves reptiles, you may find the voicemail disturbing. Our family owns a junk removal company and we cleaned out an abandoned home yesterday and there was a freezing, we thought to be dead, uh, ball python in, a, in there and uh, we took it home and have it in a box uh, with a, a kind of like a heated blanket and anyway, we can't keep the snake obviously and uh, wanted to try to find somewhere to take it. It might need some help. It was freezing. So we don't know if it's okay or not. Um, so if you could give me a call back. All right, guys. So I'm currently on my way to pick up a ball python uh, that we're rescuing. Technically, we only work with wild native reptiles, not pet reptiles, but because of the particular case we are going to take this reptile in. Um, this ball python was abandoned in a storage shed outside with no heat, no water, nothing for God knows how long. A junk removal company found the snake, believed it to be dead. It was freezing cold. Um, they put it in the woods because they thought it was dead. Someone went back from the company because they weren't quite sure and it started weighing on them. Um, and in fact, the snake was not dead. So we are going to pick up this animal now and I will let you know, um, how it goes, but again, technically we don't take in pet or exotic reptiles, but because of the situation and the case, we will be taking this guy in. All right, I have the snake and I'm headed back. Um, he does have multiple, if it, probably multiple layers of stuck uh, eye caps, if not just the one. I do believe it's probably multiple, but I just very quickly looked at him. It's freezing outside, guys. Um, so I wasn't trying to look him over really good when it's this cold outside and he's already been freezing. So I tried to get him in this warm car as quickly as possible. I'm uh, gonna get him home. <sighs> going to probably try to at least get him soaked tonight. Um, you know, we'll see, definitely get him on some heat. And then we're going to be trying to raise money to get him to the vet, obviously. So I will uh, post another update as soon as we get back. So once we got back to the house, I got the snake warmed up and then I placed him in a container with some warm water to soak and help loosen some of the stuck shed on his body. As he was soaking, I had a better chance to look over his body and was able to remove a lot of the stuck shed with my hands. However, I quickly realized stuck shed was the least of his problems when he began open mouth breathing, accompanied by gargling and whistling noises. These are all indicators that he has a severe upper respiratory infection, similar to what we know as pneumonia, and is a direct result of him being left outside in the cold without any heat during the middle of winter. Overall, his body condition wasn't horrible, but I knew we needed to get him on an antibiotic and into the vet as quickly as possible to treat the respiratory infection. So we got to work quickly, raising money on our social media channels so that he could get in to see the vet. The following people stepped up to help this guy and we couldn't be more thankful for them and their generosity. from the vet. Everything went very, very good. Um, as you may have guessed, he does have a respiratory, full-blown respiratory infection. So he will be on an antibiotic moving forward for at least four weeks. We'll go back for a recheck after the four weeks to see if he needs any more, but he is going to be on an antibiotic for the respiratory infection. And we're going to make sure that he has plenty of heat as well. So he's making those gurgling noises and he's still whistling and all the things as you can see in this video right here if you listen closely. So you may have saw that we put in a feeding tube and you may be wondering why because 
As far as his body condition goes, he doesn't look horrible. Well, we had this put in for a couple of reasons. So ball pythons are notorious for going off food this time of the year and just because they're ball pythons, period. But especially when they are not feeling well, usually they don't wanna eat. And this guy needs these nutrients in order to heal. So we did do a feeding tube. Uh, we did some vitamin C, I believe, and some Normasol. We did um, subcutaneous fluids and all of that. He does have some eye drops. We're not sure with his eyes if there could be like ulcers or anything going on in there. He has been such an incredibly, incredibly uh, patient and sweet snake. We've done a lot of things to him and he's never once struck out. Um, which ball pythons generally are sweet snakes, but as an individual, this is just an absolutely amazing snake, which makes this case even sadder because he definitely did not deserve, no animal deserves what he went through. And we're gonna make sure that he never has to suffer at the hands of people like that ever, ever again. So if you're interested in helping us with this life-saving work, you can always donate on Venmo to Carolina Reptile Center. We also have a PayPal account all of which can be found on our Facebook or Instagram pages. You can also help us simply by interacting with these videos. Subscribe, like, hit that notification bell, leave us a comment, and you can help us save more animals like this ball python and our local wildlife here in North Carolina.